way more calcium at the, isn't the answer. So the, 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 when we look at the recommended daily intake, it should not be filled with the f supplement alone. It should be your dietary calcium plus the supplement. And making sure that you have adequate magnesium to get that beneficial ratio. The reason that we use a higher magnesium to calcium ratio in the product is two reasons. One, we're trying to bring that four to one ratio closer together. If we give more magnesium, then we're, get, we're um, approaching, if we give a one to one or a 1.2 to one, we're trying to bring it back closer to that two to one ratio that ideally we should have. The study that we based the 1.2 to 1 on was a study done by Dr. Abrahams in California, a big PMS researcher, and I'm happy to report he's still alive since he's been working with women with PMS. <laughs> um, but he, had, um, he took a higher magnesium to calcium ratio and found an increase of 11% of bone mass in women compared to the control group. Why this is important is the best we ever do in research is increasing by 5 to 10%. That's all we're capable of doing, of increasing bone mass once the bones are fully grown. So this is exciting to get that high of a result. And this study um, I want to talk about because the two groups, both were given dietary recommendations, both given exercise programs, and both groups were actually on hormone replacement therapy because this was pre um, many, this, is, this study was done prior to all the controversy with hormone replacement therapy. And yet the group that had higher magnesium had the increase in bone mass, and both of them were on hormone replacement therapy. I find that amazing because it's hormone replacement therapy that's supposed to help with the increase in bone mass. So they had 16 times increase of bone mass compared to the control group. So why do we have vitamin D and zinc in, in the formula? First of all, um, they're good cofactors for bone development. And zinc and calcium can be taken together as long as it's with food, and this isn't a food supplement. And also, if the calcium's at a lower dose, it won't interfere with zinc's absorption. Why we need vitamin D is that it prevents both osteoporosis and the softening of the bone, something called osteomalacia. And that's because if you don't have vitamin D, it impairs the absorption of calcium. It actually impairs the mineralization of bone, just like uh, inadequate magnesium. And this is why you get the bone pain and the softening. One of the reasons that vitamin D is so crucial for people as they age is because most of us rely on getting our vitamin D from the sun and we convert it, vitamin, the sun actually helps us convert vitamin D in our skin into a act, more active form that we can use. But at age 70, we only have 30% of the ability of a young person to convert our vitamin D into, uh, into that active form, making vitamin D supplementation very important. Zinc is important for the actual framework of the, uh, of the bone. Remember, bone is collagen just with a whole bunch of minerals added in. And so zinc is very important for that collagen uh, portion. And what they found is that if someone's zinc deficient, they actually will have a decrease in osteoblasts, which are the, which are the cells that build bone. It always has confused me because blast, you think, break down bone, but it's the opposite. It helps build bone. So they found that less osteoblastic activity, so less building of bone, and less collagen and chondritin sulfate synthesis, which we know is so important for uh, collagen formation in the bone. And remember, osteoporosis is the breakdown of the whole framework of the bone, not just the de demineralization of bone. And they found that people who have osteoporosis have lower zinc levels. So this is an important area to look. So how are the other ways that I use calcium magnesium? One of the things I use calcium magnesium for is for recovery for athletes, uh, particularly for those who have muscle spasms. I also use it for people who have sleep problems. Uh, some of our retailers have asked us to change this product to title to sleep aid, aid instead of calcium magnesium or CalMag. And the reason for that is if you take it at bedtime, it actually, the magnesium actually helps relax the muscles. And the calcium's involved actually with the serotonin, uh, which actually helps induce sleep. And calcium and magnesium um, have been found to be deficient in those people with sleep problems. So it's a really nice, gentle way to start sleeping. I know it works because when I, I, I take it when I'm on the road, and it works wonderfully for me. And in fact, I now don't take it at night because I slept through a page, so I know that it works well as a sleep aid. It also helps prevent uh, kidney stones and gallstones. And um, it's also beneficial for people who are struggling with depression, particularly with an anxiety component, because magnesium and calcium are very helpful for both those things.
both calcium and magnesium have shown to lower blood pressure and magnesium, uh, calcium is shown to lower cholesterol. So a very good adjunct thing for cardiovascular disease. I also use it with any, anybody's on a diuretic because potassium and minerals are lost when people are on diuretics. And this product, because of the whole food content, actually has a lot of trace minerals, including potassium. My favorite use of calcium magnesium is actually for PMS. My, a ton of research on calcium and magnesium for PMS. What they've shown with calcium is that taking it over three cycles, and anytime you do something for reproduction, you need three months to, to, to make an impact. That doesn't mean you're not going to improve over time, but it takes that long to change something happening with your menstrual cycle. And what we found is that over three cycles, women have a better mood, less fluid retention, less pain, decreased food cravings, and with magnesium, it improved premenstrual depression, premenstrual headaches, better blood sugar regulation, because remember one of the uses of magnesium is to control blood sugar, and less mood swings. Part of the chocolate craving is the magnesium. Uh, it's very high magnesium, so many people seek out chocolate in that PMS phase, but really what they're needing is magnesium. Also less bloating. In fact, I've had husbands actually phone to get refills of this because of the improvement they've noticed with the PMS they have to deal with. So. So in summary, calcium magnesium is calcium gluconate and lactate that are the most soluble forms in solution. The absorption rate is between 45 and 50 percent. The, fr the fruit juice has shown to enhance absorption. There was a study done in China just showing that just adding fruit juice enhanced absorption and increase in bone mass with calcium supplement. Vitamin D, of course, is added for the reduction of hip fractures, but also because of the bone absorption and proper bone metabolism. Zinc helps with the protein formation of the bone. It is lead-free because every product, every batch is tested for heavy metals. And of course, it's in a food and herbal base as all the tonics are to enhance the nutrient content and the digestion of the product. The magnesium is higher than the calcium because magnesium deficiencies are more common than adults. It's needed for proper calcium utilization. It actually is shown to activate vitamin D. It's ensured that the bones are modeled properly and remember that high doses of calcium alone will interfere with the absorption of other nutrients, so it's very important to have a balanced formula. What sets it apart is its higher magnesium to calcium ratio. It has a very usable form of calcium, the highly soluble uh, calcium compounds. I didn't mention that the magnesium compounds are also two of the most soluble forms, magnesium gluconate and citrate. Many companies use magnesium oxides, which is actually insoluble.